So, that is uh, that brings us to uh, uh, concluding uh, the fact that there is a lot of interest in uh, uh, looking at particles and interfaces concept, uh, because uh, there are large number of applications in the, the, the materials uh, which have been uh, uh, prepared by exploiting uh, this concept. So, now <coughs> what we will do is we will talk a little bit about uh, characterization of particles and interfaces. So, if you look at um, uh, in the bulk, we have talked about uh, several um, um, uh, techniques and several uh, parameters one need to characterize the particles for, for example, uh, uh, size, uh, surface charge density, uh, um, uh, grafting density, you know, uh, uh, several parameters, right. Now, <coughs> when it comes to um, uh, particles or interfaces, uh, of course, uh, the characterization of all these parameters is also equally important. Um, and, uh, and while in the bulk, um, one of the uh, important um, um, parameter uh, which is used to characterize particles in a fluid um, is what is called as a, a volume fraction, which is uh, the volume of uh, particles uh, divided by the total volume of the dispersion, right? And uh, analogous uh, um, parameter for uh, colloidal interfaces would be what is called as a as a surface fraction. Uh, that is, a fraction of the surface that the the particles occupy at the interface um, uh, that is the area occupied by particles divided by total area of the interface. Okay? Uh, for example, if uh, one is using a petri dish for example, and whose uh, size is uh, like say uh, whose radius is capital R. Okay, uh, then um, uh, what one could do is uh, the total area that of the interface is going to be um, pi r square, uh, right? And uh, now the area that the particles occupy at the interface depends on what is the the concentration of particles at the interface. And uh, uh, typically, when one works with um, particles and interfaces, if um, uh, the particles that are micron in size are used, you can actually do an optical microscopy and obtain an image which contains um, particles. Now, if you know the number of particles at the interface and if you know what is the, the total area that or the area that the particle occupies the interface, that means the number of particles at the interface multiplied by the area that it occupies and that gives you what is called as a uh, surface fraction or the, the fractional area that the particles occupy at the interface. <coughs> and a typical value of phi uh, could vary from uh, um, uh, say uh, 0 to uh, about uh, 0 0.74 uh, if you work with uh, spherical particles um, uh, and that 0.74 is when all the particles pack in the form of a crystal and if the particles are randomly distributed in the fluid, you can go to a value as high as uh, 6.64, right. However, if you look at um, uh, the spherical particles, if they are sitting at the interface um, and if you assume that, um, you know, they are sitting exactly with half um, of uh, the surface in, in the two phases, um, then one could do a simple calculation and show that if they are arranged in the form of a, a hexagon or a HCP or HCP close packing, packing you can just consider a, a triangular area and then you can calculate that this phi can be as high as about 0 0.90 roughly. Okay? So, therefore, um, uh, while the volume fraction uh, for uh, when, you, when, you, when you work with um, dispersion in the bulk can go from about phi to um, uh, 0 0.74 um, for spherical particles, the surface fraction can go all the way from about uh, 0 to about 0 
ok. Um, and uh, the other parameter uh, that one could also use is um, in the case of uh, uh, you know the particles in the bulk uh, we can talk about um, um, number density of particles that is number of particles per uh, unit volume ok. Uh, similarly, in this case one could talk about uh, surface density which again would be the number of particles in the interface divided by the area of the, the interface ok. So, these are some additional um, you know uh, characterization that one has to uh, talk about when um, uh, one is dealing with particles at interfaces. Um, um, and uh, another additional characterization um, um, that uh, would also be important uh, which is uh, uh, not uh, so much when you have particles sitting in the bulk uh, is uh, what is called as the position of the, the particles with respect to the interface or um, the contact angle of the particles at the interface. And um, uh, this is defined by what is called as the Young's equation um, which relates the interfacial tension of the, the solid in this case the, the particle that we are dealing with uh, that is oil ok that, that is the interfacial tension of the, the solid oil interface and the solid water interface and they are related to the interfacial tension between the oil and water and cos theta and this theta is what is called as uh, contact angle and that is determined by drawing a tangent that um, uh, to the particle surface at what is called as a, a three phase contact um, uh, point. So, uh, so what is shown here is a, is a location where the fluid 1 and fluid 2 and the solid particle that is the three uh, the three phases uh, that, that that come into uh, contact and at that location you draw a tangent to the particle surface and the angle that the tangent makes with the interface gives you what is called as a, a contact angle and this contact angle could be less than 90 degree and that is when when uh, the particle is uh, more in contact with the aqueous phase and such particles are uh, termed as what are called as hydrophilic particles and you could have a, a case where the contact angle theta is greater than 90 when uh, the particle would like to maximize its contact with the oil phase and such particles are referred to as hydrophobic particles and you could have a, a case where the particles would particle would like to be in equal contact with both the oil phase and the aqueous phase and such particles are termed as neutrally wetting. Therefore, depending upon the, the type of particles uh, uh, either the particles could be wanting to be more in um, in uh, more in contact with aqueous uh, fluid uh, example of such particles could be um, uh, several uh, uh, metal oxide particles uh, for example uh, uh, hematite particles or uh, uh, SiO2 particles for example and the examples of particles which um, uh, which are more prone to being in contact with oil could be uh, uh, several types of uh, polymeric particles for example. Uh, and, uh, and this concept of uh, contact angle is very similar to um, what is called as a concept of HLB or the hydrophile uh, lipophile balance which is defined for uh, a surfactant molecule ok. So, in the case of uh, surfactant molecules HLB uh, is defined as it, it uh, relates the molar mass of the head group to the total molar mass of the surfactant molecule and that is defined as the molar mass of the head group divided by molar mass of the surfactant 
and uh, and if the molar mass of the head group is large, uh, that means um, uh, uh, that means uh, the out of the total molecular weight, there's a lot of contribution that comes from the the head group, and such uh, surfactants are uh, known to be uh, water liking or they have a affinity for uh, being in contact with water. So, um, uh, and if the molar uh, if the molar mass of the head group is very very small that means, the because of the fact that the surfactant has a uh, tail group and a head group in the case where the molar mass of the head group is small what really dominates the behavior is the, the molar mass of the um, tail group and such uh, surfactants are more oil soluble. In a similar sense when the particle is sitting at the interface you could have the, the part of the, the, the surface that is in contact with, with uh, oil for example, uh, you can um, think about an analogy with that with the, the tail group of the surfactant and the portion of the particle that is in contact with uh, with uh, water uh, and which is a hydrophilic uh, part you can think about that as an uh, analogy with the head group of the surfactant molecule and uh, and the and the relative magnitude of the the interfacial tension between the solid and oil solid water and the oil water interfacial tension determine how much of the the surface is in contact with each of the fluids and that is quantified by uh, uh, the contact angle. Um, and, uh, and measurement of uh, the contact angle or the position of the particle with respect to the interface is one of the additional uh, characterization that uh, you know one has to uh, deal with. And uh, uh, there are qualitative methods to uh, talk about uh, particle wettability or or the preference of the, the fluid particle to one of the fluids and that is simply done by uh, basically creating a, a surf taking a substrate and you deposit the particles of uh, interest uh, you know whose wettability you want to measure and then you deposit a layer of the fluid for example, an oil or water and look at what is the, the contact angle that is again you measure you just draw a tangent at the three phase contact uh, you know uh, point uh, for example, something like this and you measure what is the, the this angle with respect to the, the horizontal and you uh, calculate uh, and you find out what this theta value is. So, if the theta value is uh, close to uh, 0 that means, the fluid that is um, uh, uh, put on a on a surface coated with particles it spreads completely ok and uh, therefore, uh, the particles have more preference to that fluid. On the other hand, if you have a case where the particles uh, the, the fluid that is deposited if it takes a, a shape like a perfect uh, sphere, uh, the, particle, the, the particles do not have any uh, preference whatsoever to the, the fluid under consideration. Therefore, depending upon this contact angle one could come up with a, a qualitative way of inferring what is the the uh, the particle wettability or whether the the particle prefers to be in contact with um, uh, either oil water or um, is it uh, neutrally wetting uh, to both the fluids. Um, one could do a, a quantitative estimation of um, um, contact angle. Um, uh, again we will go back to the method that uh, we discussed in the context of making new particles. Um, wherein a portion of the, the particle surface was uh, um, um, coated with gold. So, the, the experimental setup uh, looks something like this. So, you have uh, um, uh, uh, you create a, a monolayer that means, you create you deposit particles of the interface and um, into the, the aqueous solution you add uh, reagents uh, that lead to the formation of gold nanoparticles. 
Now, uh, the gold nanoparticles that are uh, there, um, they can preferentially go and deposit onto the, the surface that is con in contact with the reaction um, solution and that occurs because of the electrostatic attraction between uh, the particles that are produced as a result of this reaction and uh, the particles that are setting, uh, sitting at the interface. Now, the fact that uh, the gold nanoparticles that are produced and the particles that are sitting at the interface, they are oppositely charged. In this case, um, the gold uh, particles that are produced, they are uh, negatively charged and um, uh, the particles that are uh, deposited in the interface, uh, they have positive charge and because of the electrostatic attraction, there is a deposition of gold and once uh, the gold, uh, the reaction is complete, you can um, uh, uh, transfer these particles onto a substrate and you can uh, observe these particles under SEM. You can calculate what is uh, D, that is the the area over which the deposition has, has occurred. So, if you look at this, so if I if I if I can I can fit a circle and I can calculate what is the, the diameter of the, the patch that has been produced. So I can I, I have a direct way of measuring D and if we know what is the, the diameter of the particle that we started with, okay, that is the, the diameter of the particles that were deposited at the interface. Um, uh, calculation in a, uh, measurement of the small d and capital D enables the calculation of uh, D. So, depending upon whether the particle is more in contact with, with water uh, or less in contact with water, uh, you know you can use a, a different expression which you can actually derive, de derive from uh, simple uh, geometry uh, as well. So, uh, so therefore, uh, this is a, uh, a simple and a direct method for um, uh, measuring the contact angle of the particle of the interface. And there are other methods um, in which uh, uh, what is typically done is that you uh, deposit uh, particles at an interface between air and aqueous solution or oil and aqueous solution. Instead of taking pure water, uh, what is done is a small amount of a hydrocolloid is dissolved in the aqueous phase and the spreading of the particles of the interface is done at a, a high temperature uh, for example, 50 degrees centigrade in this case and what is done is once you spread the particles, you allow them to reach equilibrium position, you can change the temperature from 25 to so from 50 to 25 and when that happens, the aqueous subphase it solidifies. Okay, there is a conversion of a liquid-like subphase into a, a gel-like subphase, and once the gel-like subphase is formed, the particles are trapped at the interface, and they become immobile. And what you could do is, you can pour out the the oil because gel is of sufficient uh, strength, I can pour out the oil and I can replace the top phase with a PDMS and along with the PDMS there will be some cross linking agent which, which will help the linking of this PDMS molecules to uh, the surface and after a certain curing time, you can peel off PDMS and the because of the cross linking reaction the particles get embedded in the PDMS and uh, and that could be uh, observed under SEM and I can get a micrographs again of what is the, the contact diameter that corresponds to the, uh, the location of the particles with respect to the interface and what is the diameter of the particle and again knowing D and DC, one could estimate what is <coughs> the contact angle of particles with respect to the interface.